So, you've just announced your retirement. Why now? Um, I think over the years, when I've seen players retire, um, you know, when you ask them about it, they always say they you, you'll know when you're ready. And I think I know when I'm ready. You know, I think I'm ready. You think or you know? I think. Yeah, I, you know, I love the game so much. You know how much we love the game. And um, I just feel that, I don't know. I don't know. You know, it's the right time. I believe it's the right time. Um, but I, I'll always feel that I can do more. That's the problem. <laughs> when did that moment come? When did it hit you? Um, probably when Messi was running past me <laughs> <laughs> uh, in that home game. No. Um, when did I feel? I, I actually don't know. You know, I just, I just feel that I've been so lucky throughout my career. I just feel that you know, the fact that I've played for the clubs that I've played for, the players that I've played with, won the trophies that I've won. Um, you know, playing in the MLS last year, uh, winning the championship there, and then coming to PSG and winning the, the French league here. Um, I think it's, you know, it's, it's a good way to go out. You've been a football player for 22 years. For six years of that 22, more than 25%, you lived in Salford in Lower Broughton Road. How much did those early days, 16 to 22, have an impact on that discipline to be a hard working player? How much of it was already in you and how much of it was taught to you by the people that were around you in those early years at, at Manchester United? The early years of, of my career at Manchester was, was the foundation of my whole life and my whole career. Um, without those early years of, you know, living in lodgings, coming up from Manchester, coming up from London to live in Manchester, living in the lodgings, playing with the players that I, that I played with, watching the first team train, um, cleaning their boots, cleaning the showers, cleaning the baths, going through the things that we went through as, as, youth, as youth team players, that's what shaped my career. You know, without that, um, I probably wouldn't have never have achieved what I've achieved, um, you know, in my career because, you know, to, to have had the stability to have had the you know the the aggression of, of coaches that we had you know with Nobby Styles Eric Harrison you know Archie Knox obviously the boss you know these these are the coaches that have made my career the goal against Wimbledon which obviously television had changed the Premier League had come but that was that the one moment because it seems to me that was a huge moment from football going from here to there and you were almost at the forefront of that do you recognize that um, I, I never think of it like that, you know, I never think that certain moments in my career have changed, you know, what's gone on in football. You know, people say that about, obviously, the Greece goal, people say that about certain moments throughout my career, but, you know, scoring the goal against Wimbledon, I was more pleased that Cantona came up to me in the change room and said, great goal, than, than, than thinking about anything else. Um, so I never, I don't look at it like that. People ask me, what was the best moment in my career? I don't even have to think about it. Being at Manchester United from 15 years old, um, being able to go into the changing room, see Brian Robson, and Steve Bruce, and um, and Norman Davis asking me to put, pick a pair of socks up or a pair of underpants of Brian Robson's. You know that was that was, you know that was what made me want to be at Manchester United, um, and that's what. That's what I love. That's what changed my life. It's, it's what, when I look back at my career, it's what I'm most proud of to have said that I've played for Manchester United and won and been successful with Manchester United. You know, nothing, nothing compares to that. When, you know, when I look back at the, the career that I had there um, and I owe you know, almost everything to the manager for that, you know, the, the boss, he was he was the person that brought me to the club. He was the person that signed me. He was the person that gave us the opportunity to play for the club that we loved. Um, and I'll, I'll forever be grateful to him um, for solely for that reason. And I think the moment we won the treble, the moment we won the European Cup, I, I you kind of you, you you never really saw too much emotion from the manager but I think 
that night, I personally could, you could see he was so proud that he'd won the European Cup, not just for Manchester United, but so proud that he'd seen so many of us come through as kids and go on to win the biggest football competition for, for Manchester United. Do you wish he'd stayed longer? Do you wish he'd done little things differently? Do you have any regrets about that period in your career? I mean, I always say that, you know, I haven't got any regrets. Um, there's certain things that, like I said, I don't have any regrets, but there's certain things that I look back and I think I should have done different and should have um, been different. But I think when I was at Manchester United, um, you know, at 23, 24, 25 years old, you know, I was headstrong, <laughs> I was stubborn. Um, and I think there was moments where I look back and I think maybe I should have been different, maybe I should have done things different. But um, Anything you want to go into detail in or not? Not really, because I think you know moments <laughs> <laughs> and I know moments. But I think, you know, I wouldn't want, um, I wouldn't change anything at the end of the day. You know, I don't regret anything, but are there things that I wish I'd have done different? Of course. You moved on from United to Madrid, which is completely the opposite. You had so many managers in a short period of time. How, how did that affect you in terms of the difference between United, where you had one manager, and then numerous managers in a short pace, space of time? I mean, I think that was hard. You know, that was, that was a hard moment in my career um, because I went from such stability with Manchester United, like you said, with one manager, the same kind of players throughout that time at Manchester United. And then I moved to Madrid where I think I had four managers in four years or five managers in four years. And that was not natural for me. Um, and I was totally out of my comfort zone, but, um, but I adapted. It was only in the last few months really where obviously you've been left out of the team. I think Fabio Capello was the manager at the time. Then you got back in, but then you'd agreed to go to LA Galaxy. Was that something that you wish you'd give a bit more time to, or were you happy? Were you ready to go to America? Because you always wanted to go to America, didn't you? Yeah, it was, it was, you know, I got to a point in my career where it was a passion of mine to go to America and to try and achieve, um, you know, making football bigger in, in the United States. Um, but when, when, obviously, I, when I was at Madrid, um, I'd gone through so many different emotions in that last year. I'd gone from being an England player to not being an England player, missing 11 games uh, under Steve McLaren, to then being brought back, to then being at Real Madrid, being told by Fabio that um, Fabio Capello that uh, I wouldn't play for the club again, uh, and that I know wasn't coming from him; it was coming from somewhere else. But um, because I have so much respect for him as a as a person, as a manager, and he always supported me throughout you know, the the career that I had with him as a, as a manager. Um, and then, obviously, being brought back into the team, uh, winning the league with, with Real Madrid, which was a huge thing. Um, and then, obviously, making the decision of going to America. You know, that was a big thing, because before Florentino Perez left Real Madrid, he, he literally just offered me a, a new four-year contract, which I was... I'd agreed to sign mm -hmm. um, and then obviously Calderon came in and things turned around and um, were the politics hard there different for you to understand or difficult for you I to just understand? didn't understand it you know the politics side of, of the club was was hard to understand because one minute there was one president in that loved me and that wanted me to sign for another four years uh, and then the next minute there was a, a different president in and uh, and things you know, from me being at a club like Manchester United that was totally stable for the for the amount of time that I was there, to to then go into a club which was obviously run totally differently. I'm not saying it was it's wrong, but you know it's obviously run differently. Um, but I think, you know, when we when we talk about stability, you know, that's where that's where success comes from. But you wouldn't change the experience of playing with Zidane and Figo, Ronaldo, Roberto Carlos, Raul and all those players, would you? No, no, 100% I would never change anything about my career. You know, I always thought that I would start at Manchester United and leave at Manchester United, uh, you know, finish playing there. Um, that changed, obviously, when I moved to Real Madrid. 
Um, but my my dream when I left Man United was to play for a, another one of the biggest clubs in the world. Uh, and my dream was to play with the likes of Ronaldo and Zidane and Roberto Carlos and Raul. You know, these these you, you look back at. You know, I look back at my career, uh, and I've gained so much experience from playing with these players and playing in different teams. And I'd never change that because I think it's helped me. I think it's helped me as a player. I think it's helped me as an individual to understand different cultures and different way of playing. Um, and I think it's helped me in, you know, my game with England as well. So I would never change anything. When you went to America, I mean, obviously for me, looking at it from somebody who knows you, but somebody who's a football person as well, thinking you've got more to give in the big leagues. Was the part of you that was nervous about you know, going over to America and playing in what is not the same standard as football as the Spanish league or as the English league? Or were you, was it more of a lifestyle decision and obviously ambition to create a bigger uh, MLS, if you like, a bigger game in America? Was it, was it both of those things or was it just a period you wanted to get away from it was, Europe? It was never a lifestyle decision. No. You know, I understood, I understood that it would be a great lifestyle for my family, for the kids. But for me personally, you know, Victoria knows, everyone knows around me, my decisions about playing are made solely about playing. It's not about a lifestyle. Um, of course, it was a great lifestyle over there, but, you know, my initial decision was, I want to go there because I want to raise the profile of, of football. Yeah. Um, and of course, I was nervous. You know, I was nervous because it was another challenge. I, I'm always nervous when I make a decision about a big challenge, and and I knew it was going to be a big one. I knew people might crit criticise me for it and say, you know, you're 31 years old, you've still got a good few years left uh, playing top level. But I knew that I'd made the right decision. I knew that I wanted to go to America and uh, and be part of something that is getting bigger. Uh, and in the six years that I played there, I saw so many changes happen. I saw so much more interest in the game, and that is what made it worth it for me. You know, I wanted to be successful with the Galaxy. I wanted to win a championship, um, but I understood my role as an ambassador. Uh, I understood my role as as a as a player that was coming to you know a, a new a new city uh, and a new environment. I knew that I had to work hard outside of the game as well. Let's talk about England because you had enormous pride, you have enormous pride even now about England, but you had enormous pride in playing for your country, it was almost the most important thing to you. Um, yeah, I think, you know, as, as a young kid I had two dreams, one to play for Manchester United and two to play for England. Um, not in that order, you know, Manchester United was meant so much to me, um, but I think as an Englishman you know, I wanted to represent my country. I wanted to captain my country. I wanted to play in World Cups. I wanted to score goals uh, at Wembley. Uh, I was able to do that, not with England. I didn't score any goals, but uh, with Manchester United, obviously scoring at Wembley. But playing for England was, you know, was the highlight of my career. It always, it always has been and always will be. Um, I'm very proud of what I've achieved uh, throughout my England career. I'm very proud to have played for my country for 115 times you know it's it's something that when when my, my boys look back uh, and my little girl I look back and she'll be like my daddy played for England for 115 times you know that's that's special that's that's probably the most emotional I've ever seen you in 2006 where you had to give up the captaincy it was almost like you just did not want that to happen. It was almost like you were letting go of something that was so important to you. I, th I think that was one of the most emotional times. You know, I don't, I am an emotional person, but I kind of try and keep it in when uh, I have, you know, an audience. <laughs> um, but it just, it got the best of me that day, the better of me that day. Um, to sit in front of, you know, uh, uh, the journalists and, and you know, national TV and and say I'm um, giving up the captaincy that was that was difficult you know we'd just been knocked out of a competition I had no sleep the night before through you know obviously being knocked out um, and the disappointment of that and then obviously to have to wake up and and know that I've uh, I'm gonna sit there and hand the captaincy over that was that was difficult because being given the captain's armband for my country was 
the proudest moment of my career, without a doubt. You know, to to walk out, you know, for England uh, against Italy, wearing the armband for the first time, um, that was emotional. And then to know that I had to hand it over, and it was the right time. But you know, we talk about knowing the right time for my for for my retirement. I knew that it was the right time, as hard as it was. I knew that it was the right time to hand it over. The stimulation, adrenaline, the buzz of the change room, the banter, the, everything that you are a footballer for is not going to be there. What are you going to do? I think I'm always going to need to keep busy because I'm that kind of person. You know, I I want to work. I want to I want to be busy. I want to continue to work hard to do what I'm doing outside of the game. Um, but I've been away from home since 1991 um, and it's, it's time for me to go home to London it's time for me to you know spend time with my family see my children see my wife you know be home with my parents you know it's 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 simple things of popping around to see my nan simple things of popping around to take my mum for breakfast you know I haven't been able to do that for 22 years um, so those are the things, those are the little things that um, are going to be special to me. You know, I've loved what I've done through my career. I've loved every place that I've lived. You know, I've tried to make every city uh, my home. You know, wherever I've gone, whether it be Manchester for the amount of time that I lived there, you know, obviously Madrid, LA, um, when I lived in Milan and obviously living in Paris, I've always tried to, you know, change myself into that culture. Um, but I haven't lived in London for a long, long time and I'm looking forward to going home. Something I've never understood, but bear with me a second. You go to a hotel room for a night and you depersonalise that hotel room from all the books, all the magazines, all the room service menus. <laughs> you bring, I don't know what your candle bill has been for the last 22 <laughs> years, but you bring candles with you, you bring pictures of the family and you make, even if it's just for one night, that hotel room your home. Is that because you've never been home? It probably is. I've never, I've never thought of it that way um, because you know. I just thought it was we're, weird. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we've obviously shared rooms. We've obviously shared rooms, and um, a sausage roll on my side, <laughs> <laughs> and a candle just fluttering on the other. <laughs> uh, I've never thought of it that way, but maybe consciously, that's what I kind of have missed. You know, I've missed being at home, um, and I haven't had that for. a a number of years but it's true you know when I go into a hotel room whether it's a night or whether it's a week or whether it's a month I kind of I need to feel as if you know it's my home um, but you know um, I'll be in my real home in a few weeks and that's that's gonna be a special. Will you be a coach a manager? I don't want to be a coach or a manager you know I think I'll always I'll always be involved in the game in some way but I think that that's where what I've done outside of my football comes into play now. I think that's what I'm excited about, to be honest. You know, I, I'm, I've been able to do so many things throughout my career outside of the game. Um, I think that's what I'm looking forward to uh, doing. I've, I've got plans with so many different things. Uh, and now, obviously, not going into training every day, not being so regimented with what I have to do um, as a footballer. Uh, it enables me to be able to, you know, go and do other things and be involved in other things. And I think that's that's why I'm glad that I've done the things that I've done outside of my career. How will you stay in football and connected to football and have an impact in football? Well, it's, been think... it's been in the papers that, you know, suggested owner of a football club, mm -hmm. ambassador. Are they the type of things that would interest you? Yeah, definitely. You know, uh, obviously I've got the option of, of owning a football club in, in the MLS and I will do that. Uh, that's one of the things that obviously um, plans have been put into place with that. Hands uh, on? Pretty hands on. <laughs> pretty hands on. Stability? Stability, yeah. <laughs> Stability, uh, unless the manager's crap. But uh, <laughs> um, no, I think, you know, I've obviously got that option. I've got, over the last five years, I've kind of grown into doing ambassadorial stuff, whether it's been for for the club that I've been at, or whether it's been for England, or whether it's been you know things like with the Olympics and the World Cup bids, um, you know that's been that's been something that I've been passionate about and a role that I've actually really enjoyed. And 
the media, I mean, it's, I woke up a month ago and it said, Beckham signs for Sky. I'm thinking, I quite like Monday Night Football. <laughs> <laughs> I better go and get a new suit as well. <laughs> the int- does the media interest you or not? No. No. No, not, not you know, I think I'm, I'm, I'm not as good as you at what you do <laughs> on a Monday Talking. night. Talking. <laughs> yeah. um, so, no, obviously I'm, I'm very proud to be part of Sky. I'm very proud to have the partners that I've got, um, uh, you know, outside of the game. But, uh, you know, the media side of things I'll leave to you and to, to other people to, to do because... Um, you know, you bet you are better at talking <laughs> than me. You always have been. How do you want to be remembered as a football player, as a person over the last 22 years and everything that you've achieved? As someone who did what, achieved what? What's most um, important to you? I just want people to, to see me as a, as a hard-working footballer, someone that's passionate about the game and someone that every time I stepped on the pitch, um, I've given everything that I have um, because that's, a, that's how I feel going into games at the end of my career that's how I, I look back on it and hope people will see me well you'll be remembered for many many things you had an incredible career congratulations and good luck in the future mate well done thank you very much well done <laughs>